So, good morning, good evening, uh, everybody. Welcome to today's backflow stream. And today's streaming, we have, yeah, we are using backflow to test something, but this time it's a little bit different, something else, something that we don't do normally in our case. We automate Minecraft, and we will try to. Test this redstone, small redstone contraction for the one chest. A, a hopper which pulls the stuff out of here and puts in this chest. And yeah, we will write integration just for Specflow, uh, for, for Minecraft today. Um, but before we come to that, um, first, all of our code um, from the streaming projects are on our GitHub projects, Specflow as a streaming projects of today's not yet uh, but it will be will be there and you can find all of our recordings of the previous streams on our YouTube channel uh, yeah you find all the recordings there um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notifications when the recordings are there all other videos are uploaded and please also hello follow and up. welcome to the and please also follow us on Twitch TV slash Specflow to um, get notification when we are streaming. Good. So let's let's have a look what we have. So um, back to Minecraft. So we have a, we're starting small. Let's start with. We, we want to start the functionality of a hopper. A hopper in Minecraft pulls out items uh, out of a container and, 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 and pushes it into another container. So from one chest to another chest. And if you, let's get some items. If you put item here, you see it's gone. And you find it here. And that's what we want to test today. And I already prepared a, a scenario for that. So let's jump to Visual Studio. I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong Visual Studio instance. A moment that you can also read something. And yeah, what we are do going to do is. Um, let's open, open, open solution. Let's open this. So, this should be easier to read for you. So, cool. And what we want to do is we want to automate um, this scenario. So we have a scenario and a feature file for the hopper. Scenario transfer item from one chest to another. And we have our given our range with there's the chest number one at these coordinates, and there is a hopper at coordinate pointing to chest one. You see the this direction is important. And there is another visual studio. There's another chest on, on top. So this is the um, the below one first and we do the hopper and then we set the up the bigger one. And then uh, we put an item into the first chest and it should appear afterwards in chest 2. So, um, what we, what, and that's, that's what we want to make. And I prepared already some stuff. Uh, let's, it's not completely working, but we will fix this during the day. So, we need to 
stop this now. And let's let's um, make here a breakpoint, test explorer, and let's say debug and see what's happened. Um, so let's make this a little bit smaller. So we are playing. Um, what what is happening now? What's happening? We're using a dedicated server that's running locally. Uh, for Minecraft, it's now it should start any moment. So it should now be here. We're running the world, and we are in a completely empty uh, world. And. Let's say given there is just well x and zero, and we get the first first error. Where are we move to coordinates? Okay. Um. So what should happen is is we should have seen now a player joining the game, a bot, and we are controlling the bot, and the bot is is building the redstone construction and doing everything. So we are only. Uh, Spectator, um, yeah, and have a look at it, good, but something uh, broke, so what is, is the problem with the, with the bot, we have an internal server error, cannot read property set movement, okay, so, how this is working, so we are in spectral, we have here our C sharp code, and we talk with via a REST interface via another web server. And this web server is is here. So it's a small uh, JavaScript application uh, because the framework for the bot is written in JavaScript. So to make the translation between .NET and JavaScript, uh, wrap this whole stuff around uh, uh, HTTP. Uh, rest a uh, rest JSON server and try to do stuff. So, um, it should like I, I show you it should like following. So what I can show is can start this, and we start this. We should already in use ah. No, there is one running in the background. And the server is also still running. Yeah, because we crashed. So um, let's stop this all. Start the server again. So server runs. You can try. And let's let let our bot join. And any moment here is our bot. Here is our spec for Minecraft bot. And what we can say is now with this raised API was implemented that he should move somewhere. Let's give let's move into zero zero. We send this in and we already see him moving. Cool. So Let's stop this all and let's have a look why it's not working anymore. So we have here removed positions. That was already it didn't join at all. So no. So let's add Player steps. Let's make here a breakpoint and let's run it again. Yeah. So the server starts up. 
Needs a little bit of time. Perhaps it was a little bit too early. Now we are here. Um, I think that the bot should already be there. I think the problem what it is is that uh, the server needs longer to start up and that's why we could get the errors. Let's simply increase the let's increase this a little bit. Did it shut down correctly? Yes. Everything good. Let's try it again. Back to server list. Let's quickly add here a breakpoint. Simply. No, this not no it's not running. Okay. Ah yeah, one of twenty, so yeah, that was the timing problem. Now we have our bot here. So let's see what he's doing here doing. So we have the, the rest client. So we get there we say that there is a, a chest. At this coordinates, we do a little bit of calculation. I come to that further. Now we say the bot should move there, and we hear it. We hear it moving. Cool. Now we see it's. Uh, we wanted that it's on minus one and zero, and we can check it's on minus minus one and zero. Uh, on the on the right side targeted block. Cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah, we know we have we are there. Cool. So next step is we put block in our inventory and let's move that and then place a block. And we already hear, heard it, and there is the chest. And yeah, let's move it off the side, equip the hot to move there. Now we get a chest, and we have the chest. So, building off of the whole stuff is already working. So, now we want to put an item there. So, we say we want to put an item in our inventory, we have stone, and now we want to put it in our chest, and the coordinates is 0, 0, 0, 0, that would be the slower chest, but would be the, is the wrong one, I, I forgot, uh, that was others round around, good problem in the feature file. So, so it opened the chest but it couldn't deposit the stone. So okay. And we also didn't get didn't get any chest content and now server is done. Um so uh, we know now that this works let's let's have a nice Look how it is. One, one flu, um, flow without breakpoints. But you see it for once. Ah, back to the game. So, and he, here, and this movie. And what you can see is what we build is everything there. So we reset the, reset the world. Okay, there was a problem with the second, second chest. Okay, it's interesting. Yeah, there are timing issues. 
Ah, but we will fix them. Cool. So, and now, but more now a little bit more into detail what is happening before we fix fix the stuff that you know what is happening. Yeah. Um, if you have questions, please put them in the chest, and I will try to answer them. So, so how is this this automation all all working? So we have. A, First, you saw we have this this uh, Minecraft server running in the background. I can also start it manually. So this is this is like when you have a web application that it runs. You have you start your web server, and in our case, it's a Minecraft server. So nothing uh, big happens. So what I did for that is we have a hook, a spectral hook, a before scenario. We make this for scenario, and we have here start servers and also stop servers for shutdown. Minecraft server directory. <laughs> so again, we are using the directory pattern. Let's have a look what it's doing. So the first thing is is we reset we are resetting the world. In Minecraft, when you have a look at the server folder, you have a word folder and there's your word saved. And what we are doing is what I'm doing is I have a world backup. This is the golden master, so uh, no, not the golden master, but that's the starting point. And at the beginning of it, I simply delete the old world folder and copy the world back up to the world. So we start every time with a nice, nice uh, world. And after that, I'm simply starting the Minecraft pro process, the Java process, some parameters and to the Java file, and it's running. Redirecting some output that I can that we can do something and start the process, and then we are waiting for 15 seconds to continue. And so we get every time a new flat world and can work with that. Um, for stopping, so for shutdown, what we are doing is simply um, we we write two standard output slash stop. And this shuts down the server, and then we wait for uh, 10 seconds that the process exits, and then everything is uh, fine again. So this is the Minecraft server. The bot, uh, the bot is as said written. So the bot uses for for the bot. I'm using a library called Mindflayer. Really cool. Yeah, you can. Write your write your bots uh, for Minecraft. It's not everything works a little bit lim sometimes limited, and it also doesn't uh, user authentication. My local setup this works. Uh, don't use this on product production Minecraft server. And what I did is with another JavaScript library X Express. It's an, an HTTP server. I'm I'm wrapping the bots, bot commands around it. So, like here, uh, how this works? We have this up on slash position. When we send a get request on position, we get uh, we sending back the entity, the position of the bot. Or we have a post on position, where we then say, okay, please move there. We have look inventory some stuff. Get this. Get some slots to get the item into the inventory. Uh, we have the place block uh, method where we say, okay, we want at this positions uh, block, and we have also chest to uh, so have a look into it. What is in the chest and to put something, some uh, stuff in the chest, and that's what we're needing at the moment. And how is this started? It's, it's similar similar to the server. Uh, we have a, that's the other hook. What we're doing here, the Mindflare server driver. What we start. Um, it's a JavaScript. Uh, it's written in JavaScript. So we simply started with Node. Again, um, redirect an output. Wait some seconds that it started. It's good, quite faster. And for shutdown, we simply kill the process and that was it. And with that, we always get a nice clean world, start new, and everything 
Oh, it's fine. So we so the we don't need to remove everything afterwards we're building. So this is the setup around. And let's have a look at the implementation of this chest. So what we are doing is so first we get we say okay given there is uh, the chest number one at x zero and z zero. We don't need the y coordinate, the height in that case because un unnecessary information in that case. And with the name, what I did is at first it's always the type, which block type, and then uh, increasing number. So, um, so we get the coordinate. Coordinate is a simply a record with x, y, and z z values. And how how with the block block placement is working? Um, you don't say the coordinates where the block should be but you say I want to place it on on the side of another block so you always place it on a, on a different block so I place it above or below or front left fr uh, back or, or right so in our binding we simply want it on the on the ground so the neighbor block where we place it is one below the one where we want to have it and we say with the placement vector we say where it is and this is y is one so we say we want it above so we know now which where on which uh, block we want to connect this and where it is um we can probably or a little bit of direct order here. Um, that's that. These lines is so we have a, a world context, a dictionary where we save all these blocks that we can later access them simply by name and know where they are. So from a writing a scenario, this is quite quite funny, uh, quite good because I'm only specifying here chest one. And we know in the background on which coordinate this is. I don't have to repeat this. Uh, that's nice for writing scenario files. And yeah, we create the entity and save it. Then we have our vector. Then um, we have to move our player in the ne some, somewhere near. So we say, okay, we move it to on the x axis one, one on the side. Let's uh, go to these coordinates. So what this go to is okay. We say we move player to the coordinate, and then we we rating. We always um, checking if the the player already uh, reached the positions. It's limited currently about um, five seconds, and if we reach in five seconds the time, perhaps we need to do this. Let's make here. This, let's make this ten seconds. It goes there, and then again we put the block in our inventory, in creative world. So we have access to everything, but we need to put it in our inventory, and after that we place the block. That's that's it. Um, the second binding is a little bit interesting, more interesting. Uh, we have the same start. This this case we get uh, yeah, it's the same same with the stuff. It's on the on the ground, and now we get we are getting from our world context target block. So where this pointing to, and we get it by name. So let's put the feature file side by side. We don't need this. And we don't need this. Side by side, so we're getting to chest one. We get this block. Now we can calculate our placement vector. Where do we want this? So this is simply coordinate block, the coordinate where we want the 
block to be at the end and what is the target block we get this this placement vector um, then we are calculating coordinates where the player should go in that case we make a little bit more distance between the block uh, uh, there uh, it's no problem to reach the this to, to set but uh, it's easier we go there and then again we say put block in inventory because it could be some other and place the block and the third third one is similar to the first one but in this case we have a y coordinate high um, and uh, yeah so we don't name take the ground level but the, the rest is the similar to the first part so then when a player puts an item into chest this should be chest 2 and this should be chest 1 and have it here so um, and this is, yeah, put an item in chest 1, again we get the block from the world context, we have then the coordinates, we want stone, and then say put in the chest, give you the chest coordinates, say stone and one item. And for some reason this isn't working at the moment. Um, but let's let's run, run this again, put block in inventory, this horse already asleep. What chest? This is the post. So let's make it a little bit bigger for you. No. So what you're getting here, and let's have a look. What what exactly does the chest does? So we get get the position of the chest converted to a vector three. We get then the block. And then we say open chest, and we have to wait a little bit, and then we can say deposit item in chest. So we say we have the chest, the name and amount. We try to find the item in our inventory on display name. This should be good. And we found it. Um, we try to deposit it into the the chest. And then we have if this works, we have deposited or unable to deposit. Let's add the cause of let's add the error message. Perhaps this helps. And we see this in the chat error. And good. So let's let's give it a try. Let's run this again. In the bug because if not we really getting quickly cut um, uh, kicked out of the server. Okay, Don't need this breakpoint anymore. So it's starting up. Yeah. Oh, it's there, bot is already there. Back to game, yeah, it's here. So, let's... It's supposed to bright work for... Uh, okay, there's something with the movement. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. So, bot didn't move to location. Interesting. What are we? Yeah, we have some strange coordinates. We didn't move there. Good question. We want to move there, but it didn't do it. Interesting, interesting. That happened. That's new. Mm -hmm. 
So, looks like we have to fix other stuff before uh, moving. So this is slash position. Set default goal. Entity. <laughs> We have to do a, a lot of sleeps here, but let's let's see if this is really a timing problem. It was here. No. Nice oh, there. Okay. Okay. Did the okay, the notes are didn't start it. So let's let's make this a little bit better. So what is if we start Ah because okay what disconnect okay so we have some leftovers. So let's clean up. Clean this. We don't have a node process. Good, that's done. What is an output when it's finished? Um, done. <laughs> Render is done. There. So, what we can do? Minecraft server. Yeah, and yeah, in that case, it's 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 Minecraft, but still, it's um, it can be can be everything what you have. You start an external process and only want to continue if this is is uh, finally there. So what we can do is we make an output data received event. Let's add a method here, and what we can say is what we also need is a manual reset event. Private manual reset event. Server started. So, what we can say is we say this manual server, no, server started equals new manual reset event. Initial state is true when I remember correctly. And then can we say server started wait one until signal. So no the system. Not signaled. And what we can do is, so we don't need this right sleep. So we have here in the state receives events, and there we get the data. And if this contains done, we can say set. You can say set to signal. That's done. Oh. 
Uh, so what we're doing is we have the, the we had a uh, event that checks if the, in the output is done there, and if it gets that we get uh, we sig signal this manual reset event, which means we are not blocked here anymore. This is stopped. Good. Let's try this out. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. We need to do this afterwards. Stick with me. But again, this is nothing else. Yes, we're starting a Minecraft server here, uh, but it could be your WPF application, it can be your WinForm application, it can be your console application. Uh, what we're doing here. So, why don't we do get some output data received stuff here? Why is the it's running it's there? Why doesn't it do anything? That's 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 it at all. This is not a process start info. Yeah, this has no events. Ah, there is some um, stuff missing. Fire. Wait, no. Wait, exit. Enable rising events equals true is missing. I always forget this. So. Yeah, as said, this can be any process, but you need to launch and you have these problems of uh, when you start. You start probably with waiting, then you get other problems and and then you have to be more creative in, in finding the stuff. It's still not selling stuff here. So, .NET process output event. So, we just sounded up with stream, yes. Ah, begin up. We also need to begin output read line. Yes, there is another one. We read, redirect the node, but we did. And we need to say begin. And after start process, begin. Anything else? Process, shell execute, doesn't. Uh, start asynchronous, we must redirect this process, add the event handler to the output, and call the after. And it will exit the cause cancel output read. So try sixty four. So do we get now we get something and what do we get? Yeah, we get every every line. Cool. So let's hope we get yeah done nice and we set this and now we're still getting stuff but we are continuing our work we're already there 
There, they are. There she is. Chest. Cool. Hopper. Okay, so. Let's be more where we want to move. We want to coordinates. Go to coordinates. Yes. We want to move to zero. Zero on Y5. This would be then here on top. Now it worked. And then there's the chest. So, we got stone in the inventory. We can check this with an inventory call. Uh, inventory. Send. And we get it here. It's, so it has one stone, one chest, one hopper and one chest in the inventory. Cool. So, that's... And it deposited one stone, and it wasn't there because it was moved there. Cool! <laughs> Worked! So, then let's, um, then it appears, let's make it here a, a breakpoint. Where are we? Uh, put in the chest. Okay, we are still waiting for a response here. Did I forget something? Yes, I forgot to send an insert send. No, this send status and we say 200. That's okay. That's that's missing. So uh, let's stop this and. Let's kill this. So this was an error on on this side. Cool. So this have this we have. So now we have get also the async handler for for the chest to for the items. Um, what I didn't do it here is we have here get chest content, but it's still a void method, so we don't get stuff back. But I already had a look what we get here. So this is the the structure we get. So let's let's create a um, type for that to deserialize. So let's say private. Oh, okay. yeah, let's make it private class um, just item. So what do we need? Let's copy this. Here, so um, what do we need? We need we take the display name and we take the count. Int count. The other stuff is, is not interesting at the moment. So and we get there on the way. So get list of just items. Cool. And because this is the stuff we use for so communicating, let's make a nice one with proper casing. Let's make a public record. It's probably always the same. I turn in inventory. We have string name and we have int and mount. And what you can do now is here we have now the response. You can say we make a simple transformation. So this is now a list of a item in inventory. 
respawn data select item new item in inventory this is i display name i amount uh, it's count and we make it to list and done breakpoint cool build node is not working java so it's also not running so it did build let's run in debug and let's see what's happened So that's the way one. So server is started. It's there. So anti load. Let's continue here. And there's our bot. She's moving. Building stuff. Uh, then we have that. Interesting. It again, didn't move there where we wanted it. Why? 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 And we get the exception. Good. Yeah. We you know. <laughs> what can we do to fix this? <laughs> we can make it, let's make it. No, no. Um, we could do a retry. We could do a retry. Um, <laughs> we could it poly, poly I think it's poly poly dot net we try we try pattern with poly Cool, cool, cool. Ah, yeah, we make the policy and then we say what should be executed. Cool. So let's do this. Activation uh, tests. Poly. Install. Good, so we want to go to coordinates here. We want policy, so the word policy equals poly. What this is? Um, poly. Ah, no, it's policy handle exception retry. 
three times. Policy. And then we can say policy execute the action and we simply put all of this here. Let's make here a breakpoint. Uh, this should be everything. Build. Everything down. Yeah. And let's try. So we are here, our bot is here. So, first movement, test, and the second movement that would work always. Yes. And that case it, oh, it worked again. So we put stuff in the inventory and let's see what we get as chess content. We make the request and okay, it looked there but we didn't get any internal get an error expression related to force the value. Chest items. Okay, so we have a bug here. Let's see what we have here. So we open the chest. I think we, we, this, this was too, too quick. We open the chest and, and it was simply too quick to. Uh, get this and then this breaked and then we could didn't close it so what we could do is we make a try catch with this and in that case we make a rest send Status, it's a four or four Any. send error. Then we can close it and we should also close it here. Thus, okay. Thus JavaScript, JavaScript, try catch has a finally. Yeah, it has a finally. finally. Cool, then we can always put the chest close here and cool. So good that we had a an error but Try it again, Uncle Sam.
So, our book. First move. Second move. I'm supposed to. Hard works. Cool. Put it in the chest. This here. And yeah, that was again a timing issue. Now we got the response and we get some data. I hope this was successfully mom count. We translate this and we don't have an S30. Ah, <laughs> uh, good. Good, but this is not well. Items equals and the items should be items should does not contain a should not be empty. Cool. So let's try it, run it, and completely run through. Oh, already building. Hopper. Yeah, move worked. Chest. Stuff there. Server closed. Done. And we have our working server. We can now let's let's start the server manually and have a look at the chest if it's really there. Check if your test is really working done let's connect so everything is here and here's our stone item cool we successfully wrote an <laughs> integration test for um, not complicated but for a redstone contraption, for a redstone. So, um, quite, quite funny stuff. So, um, um, but what you saw and, and now in the last hour, and what I already started to explain, is these are normal old challenges. Um, that you have if you want need to automate something in, uh, for for black box when you have a black box your application you can't adjust and need to put make black box testing so let's go through this uh, challenges and I say, I'll tell you how I solve this all so uh, bring scenario And we need passphrase. Push this up. That everything is safe. So let's let's document all the challenges in in a, in a file here in the readme. Let's make here a readme. 
empty and can I just well, black box testing and how they so. so the first challenge we had so the, the goal was okay I had the stupid idea I want to write I want to out use backfront automate snares to test this. So okay Minecraft I need somehow to control it and then um oh, there was okay how do I do that? So this was the first first question. Um how to control the black box? from the outside so in here in this case okay I was able to find this JavaScript library uh, that enables to write your bot so for Minecraft mine layer JavaScript Script library to write the bot. So, uh, but that's the special case. But what do you do? What do you do normal for 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 black box testing? Yeah. So for so for web applications, you use Selenium or Playwright if you want to be fancy. Um, for mobile applications. Use up you. Um, for desktop, desktop, desktop applications, you can use the the Windows app driver to control these. This one, the Windows application driver to control curl stuff. Probably we could also use this for controlling the Minecraft client. I don't know. I didn't went this this way. Um, but this is the this, this is always okay. You have this problem. How can I solve this? And then you find some way. And now in that case, I was able to go. Um, uh, don't need to control the application with key bindings and something that would be probably rather horrible. Um, but I was had an a API for that. So that's that's one of the questions, the challenges you have always with black box. How can I control it? Uh, also for for APIs, you can use REST job or or something else. The next challenge uh, we had is that we we, we need to start uh, we need to start the black box and know when it's ready. In that case, uh, for Minecraft, we, we we yeah we started the process and waited for the um, for for a specific output um, for a web application you can do okay you start you, uh, you, you start an in process web server um uh, wait until this is um, up and running but this is more in process web server is is probably more some because there is black box you don't have the apis and there um uh you have to start well depends how it integrates it uh start 
IIS locally and, and in that case probably when do you know when this is ready um, you could ping uh, ping uh, if it's available uh, a status endpoint or ping uh, uh, endpoint that does not have side effect that side effect doesn't have side effects that you know when this whole service application there uh, for mobile applications um, this is normally done by Appium so because it, well, Appium works um, uh, it uh, deploys to the device and so it's it, it's it's there um, for APIs uh, when we go see it's okay um, uh, again, it's, it's 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 if it's a web based on HTTP and JSON, so it's the same stuff we we for web applications. So for web applications and HTTP JSON APIs, it's it's the same. So you have to start it and and see when when it's finished. We could we could have done this also. Um, for for here, what we did is we simply waited, simply waited for the for the JavaScript process. I think about uh, no, this worked the wrong one. My player, so we started here simply five seconds. We could also make a status um, uh, status there and react on that. So yeah, we could do that. So let's do this. But you can see what I mean. So we make simply make uh, when it's available. So but we want also that when when the bot is able to receive events. So what we need is we have a spawn and then okay we set the already stuff. We have the already that's cool. So we can say we make an app get status. And we don't need this as async. And this is if MC data are not undefined, then uh, press send status two hundred. Else res send status um HTTP status codes. Oh, what it would be a good status code continue no success redirect error bid not found come Server errors. Um, server is unavailable. That's that's good. Five or three. Five or three. And now we can do as we have now. Poly can now say here. Now policy equals policy. Um. Re poly handle good questions. Um, and Okay, that we need an, an rest. Okay. Uh, mind flare. So, first we need. Let's spin this. Drive. We need here a new. 
Hop là. Boule. Stake Status. Then we have a var request is new rest request on status. It's a meta.get. And var response equals rest client get request if response. Yeah, return response is successful and handle result is bool. Then the value is so it's the same and retry forever uh, yeah and then we say we need the other mind player driver then we can say policy, policy execute my flare driver get status. So we don't need this. So let's make here a breakpoint. And here a breakpoint. And here. Everything that stopped. Node. Java is also stopped. Let's run this. So we're waiting on the on the server. And after that we can start the, the JavaScript part. So we got here what we can do is now we make simply a already something um, status don't need get we get a okay on already on it. So policy execute get a success. We get an V. Okay. Handle result. Okay, we make now this forever. So this was uh and we'll handle result uh. okay it's it's then when when so we need to invert this so if it's fourth so that's something we could do probably better and clean the processes up. Uh, but that's another problem. Good. We executed it once. It's worked already, and we're continuing. Cool. And we removed one, 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 one thing more. 
So that's second challenge. I mean issues. Um my, yeah. Timing issue. And there is is generally you probably start with uh start with some sleep methods. Um but you quickly uh let's run this you get get problems, okay? Something is done then uh, suddenly taking longer and then you get other timing issues then you increase it to immense amounts it's getting slow um, now we have again the bot move problem how's it fix? yeah sadly the retry isn't working here Mm -hmm. Ah, there's the hopper. Problem is that the hopper is that's strange. That's auto is that auto jump? Auto jump. Ah, that's the problem. Good, we found this out also out. But yeah, time back to time. So we start with sleep methods, you saw it, we had it, worked, and then suddenly this sort of took long, and then, okay. Um, convert this, uh, try to convert to, to, to poles, and, and with, with a timeout, with a timeout, or a max run time, or, um see if you have some some event um events there that you can catch events to see when it is ready. So the pause is what we did now with, with the status backend to check always um events to see when it's ready. That's what we did for the for the server process. That's what we did for the server process. That's that stuff. We we blocked here and we're looking in the output until when every when it's when it's finished and then it could continue. So no need need for that. So one issue that I always have have is resetting your environment. Um, for Minecraft. This was uh, restoring a uh, good copy of the good copy of the world. That's what I did here. That's the equivalent of a restore of a database. So for database you could restore a good state of the database depends on the size if it's multiple gigabytes your restore is probably taking some time in that case uh, how, is it? how much data do i copy here four megabytes so nothing or you could also uh backup also uh copy the DB files, so underlines, they only do the copy and not the whole restore. Um, depends also for a database, if how I can uh, restore all this stuff. Um, 
other ways also yeah um, undo all the changes you did during um, uh, all, all your changes you did during your scenario um, rather complicated um, because you have to keep track of everything um, or you could you could start um, start with an empty DB and fill everything every time new. Um, that always that's 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 uh, it depends on your application and where's the database and where's the data. Um, also for, for for files, if you have working with files, you restore a good copy of it. Um, what what? There you have to look at your black box and 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 see. Um, Yeah, um, then also uh, the thing is perhaps you need some special configuration to make to uh, to make it work. So for Minecraft, this was I had to make the make server offline to disable authentication so that the bot could connect to it. Um, for your APIs, um, mark the, if you are in a multi, in a, in a, in a microservice world, mark the um, other services it's called, it is calling. You only test your stuff for web applications. Um, SSL sets could be a problem. Um, or you need to adjust something there. Um, what else could it be for? Um, yeah, external. You need to mock external dependencies because you're loading something from outside there what's not available in your test environment or something. That's that's all stuff you need to consider. Um, but these are all the, the challenges you have every, every have every time with black box testing. We did today with Minecraft to have a little bit more fun. Uh, but the challenges are the same. Um, Anything else? Yeah, we had to challenges double state. Uh, because you can't uh, access access the state um, of your of the black box, you need to save it on your own. You have to with your own copy. So where where we have is word context where we have no of our name blocks at where locations are. This is some state Minecraft knows but we can't access it and so we need to save this. Um server so step there's nothing there records what did we do we talked about everything this Hooks, yeah. Uh, shut down, shut down of the black box for Minecraft. Again, uh, stopping the two processes in the right order. Uh, again, for your for your web application. Are all rec 
first done. Are there any transactions of open? Um, that that you have to see for for yourself. Um, what to do and and uh, does a process kill corrupt some data? Uh, if you clean up the data but you killed on the process and uh, because some writing isn't finished, you have done a corrupt file and can't read it the next time, that's bad. Uh, you have to think about this. Yeah. Uh, anything here that we had already? No, that we have. That's everything also here and that's that's here. So yeah. There are these challenges in black box testing, there are solutions I showed you some as an example of Minecraft uh, and you see so Minecraft is probably not the application for to be able to be tested and if you put in some effort a little bit and be a little bit creative you can do it so uh, only because you think okay it's a black box and you can't do it you can't do test automation there it's possible and you can I don't think somebody at, at Mojang likes to build this every day or for every release to put out such a construct and see if it's still working. Yeah, if there are way of tests and this is another way, but yeah, at the end you can you can automate nearly everything. It's always always a question on um, effort that's needed. Um, but you always have to keep in mind how much time it saves you at the end. If you need to run this now once a week, this is now, what is it? How long did it take? 35 seconds the last time it was 35 seconds. If you do it manually, you need at least a minute or two minutes for it. And that's, it's only one scenario you can, work and, and and make new now new additional stuff based on this the important stuff is the groundwork when you have that the rest is always easy always fast stuff cool yeah that's 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 the challenges um and yeah uh, let's say let's let's stop today a little bit earlier uh, only uh, we good, went good through I wanted to show you this this challenges and how to solve it inspire you uh, to make also your black box testing possible with Speckwell yeah that was a funny combination with JavaScript and, and C sharp to get this to work um, Again, um, if you're watching this now on Twitch TV slash Specflow, please follow us there that you get new notifications and uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel, Specflow, uh, that you get notifications when we upload the, the recording of this stream. And if you watch this now on YouTube, then please subscribe that you get the notification and also follow us on Twitch that you can see it live and ask me questions there. Um, I will move the code to our GitHub project here with everything that should be then able, that you also able to run. Uh, was also some yeah, server configuration here, what's needed to be adjusted that everything is working. I will. Uh, uh, jump this here, we will make a small readme probably what you need to do to get it run locally but you should find it in the next days here on the GitHub project yeah so this was it for today, I hope you had fun and I hope I see you in the next one
Bye.